Hi everyone, Dan Central here and um, welcome to another collection video. Now this is going to be one of the biggest collections I've got, um, not the biggest but one of um, and it's probably the collection that I'm the most proud of, not just because of, of the quantity of games that's there but also just due to the fact that it's on a system that isn't that well known to start with and also it didn't do that well really either which is a shame because I actually really do like the the system and there are actually a few awesome games on it um, but because of other games that weren't that great it kind of let it down and it ended up flopping um, but yeah I'm really proud of this collection probably the proudest collection I've got really because of the fact that it's a system that's not really um, sought after people don't collect for it um, so to have the kind of collection that I do is pretty um, amazing really personally that's what I feel you may agree or disagree but um, yeah so because it's a long collection um, it's gonna be a few parts at least um, so I'm not gonna um, waffle on like I sometimes do uh, sometimes yeah maybe always <laughs> um, but yeah let's uh, let's just crack on straight away because otherwise I'm gonna end up um, going over again now this time I thought I'd show the console first for a change rather than waiting all the way till the end just for something different so I've actually got two Philips CDIs, um, one's mine and one was my uncle's and then he didn't want his in the end so he gave it to me. Um, the CDI came in lots of different models, um, hence why these all actually look different to each other. Um, you can get really big ones which is what I've got, you can get smaller ones, you can actually get a portable CDI as well which I did see a video on um, a while ago which looked pretty awesome so you can play CDI games on the go. Um, but these are sort of two of the bigger versions you can get. Now this one is oh, my one, um, it's the CDI 210 model and it's absolutely massive. Now I'd hold it, I'm going to hold it up properly but I'm going to have to put some fingers here because otherwise the whole tray is going to fall forwards because it actually works on a spring. So just hold it up like this so you can sort of see sort of the, the size of it. And then if I hold, oh, whoops, see, see, it falls forwards. Oh, stop falling forwards. <laughs> There's the front of it as well. So, Philips CDI 210. Um, basically, the spring um, has busted in there, unfortunately. I was on it um, a few years ago and um, pressed to eject it. And as it was ejecting, the spring just sort of snapped and it stopped ejecting. And now I have to literally force it. I have to pull the whole thing out. Uh, that's just to keep it protected. Um, put the disc in, and then literally I have to. Whoops, let's put that back in because I don't need that. Um, and then put it back in again, and then it still plays fine, but just because the spring's gone, I have to force it. And obviously, it makes a horrible noise, like it's not very healthy. But what can you do? It works fine, other than that, so I just have to put up with it. Um, so there's that one anyway. Oh, and on the back, quickly, before I start the collection, you've got all the ports there. Um, this is actually here. This thing here, this uh, long rectangle thing here, is actually the, the digital video cartridge which enabled you to play movies and um, sort of video parts of games. Um, a lot of games actually don't work at all unless you've got that in there, which is kind of another way that, you know, um, Philips tried to make their money, which is pretty bad. But there you are. So you've just got SCART lead on the back, you've got your power, power slot there. Um, also, you've got all your other aerials down there and over there so let's put that down because that's actually quite heavy and then before we start guys this is the other one I've got so again it looks slightly different it's got different buttons here I've got your play and your pause buttons here um, this this actually does come out when you click on the button but it only comes out halfway and you have to pull it the rest so again not completely had it but the springs on its way out so so and again if I lift it up this way <laughs> Again, you can see just how massive the thing is. And on the back, um, oh, I can't believe how big these things are. And then you've got your stuff there. Power cable's a bit, um, power slot's a bit bigger on this one. And this actually opens up. Oh, I think it does. Does it open up? I'm sure it does. I'm sure it slides, there it is, it slides open. So you can actually stick the video cartridge in there. This one doesn't have one. So the video cartridge games won't work on there. I have to use the other one so I use the other one more because that's mine anyway so but there you go I cannot believe how big these are really can't 
Okay, so without wasting too much time, um, let's get on to the collection. I'm out of breath and all I've done is lifted those up. They are unnecessarily big. I don't know why they had to be so big. It's just mental. The biggest systems I've ever owned and probably ever existed. Um, just mental, mental stuff. Anyway, let's move on to the collection now. Um, basically, um, in terms of my collection, I've got... A load of games that are a certain size disc or case, and then another load of games that are a smaller size. So I've got a load of um, games that are kind of in this kind of size, and then I've got some games that are in sort of a smaller size. So what I've got is I've basically got um, kind of almost like an A to Z of big ones and an A to Z of smaller ones. So I'm going to go through sort of an A to Z first and then another A to Z as opposed to mixing them up, just because it's the way I've got them organised on the shelf. So you'll get like A to sort of Z and... Well, A to, yeah, A to Z, and another one after that. All right, so let's get on with it so I don't waste too much time. First game, a visit to Sesame Street, numbers. I still remember going into the shop with my uncle, I'm, I'm getting this, when I was like six, seven. Um, basically, uh, they also do one called Letters, which I will get to. I have got that as well, but I'll show it later on. At the time, my uncle was like, do you want numbers or letters? You can't have both. And obviously, whichever one I chose, I'm obviously going to want to know what the other one was like. But I said numbers, so he picked that one up for me. And then I would, I'd always wanted to see what letters was like and then got that later. Um, so, yeah, basically, obviously, based on the the, uh, the TV show, you go around Bert and Ernie's, The Count, um, Elmo's the main host uh, when you turn it on and stuff. Um, let's just get inside. Um, and basically, it's just helping you count really, um, so obviously for little kids and stuff. Next one is classic game, Battleships. Now, love Battleships. Um, I've actually got the board game of it as well. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, obviously, playing it two players is really fun. You basically position your Battleships uh, where you want them. Sorry about the light glare again. Um, and then obviously, you, you, the second player that you're playing with turns away and then turns back after you've hidden them and has to kind of, obviously... Um, choose different points around the board to kind of um, throw torpedoes at and to try and sink your battleships. And it's a lot of fun, I have to say. So had hours of fun on that um, in the past. So Next one, based on the cartoon um, on TV, Bears Dim Bears. Uh, this is On Their Own. Um, oh, and, and You On Your Own. So it's basically um, a game where you... Um, basically earn stars um, depending on um, what things you do if you if you um, solve puzzles or if you um, do certain things and you get it right and stuff you get stars and the more stars you get um, the more of a chance the, the they're they're in with of going to the the, ca the county fair um, so there you go so yeah really fun I've, I've had a lot of uh, Good memory spent on that as well when I was younger. Caesar's World of Gambling. Now, this this these videos in general will be of great appeal to my good mate um, Sebastian, aka Half Blind Gamer. Anyway, uh, I know he's watching this now. Anyway, um, but in particular, I remember seeing a video of his not long ago, and he was showing Caesar's World of Gambling on his video. Um, it's great. I love it. I really do love it. You get to play uh, roulette, blackjack, um, craps. I think it is. And then you've got the slot machines at the back um, that you can play on as well. You've got car machines and um, yeah, it's just it's just brilliant. It's loads of fun. You've got your own um, counters that you have um, that you buy and then you basically gamble, obviously, and see how well you can do. Um, but yeah, I used to play this with my nan constantly uh, every time I went round to see her um, and she loved it as well. So yeah, awesome. Uh, Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia. Now... Um, this is a great piece of um, kit, actually, for uh, finding out loads of information. When it first came out, it was £150 for a game. I know, you're, you're probably like me, like, what for a game? But it's because of all the knowledge that's in there. It's like a massive, massive, massive book of knowledge. And there's so much stuff in there. Um, that's what kind of caused the price to be as it was. Um, and I remember doing a, an essay at school and I used this for it, um, mainly because the internet went down at the time and it's the only other source I had. 
that's besides the point. I did use it, <laughs> um, and it's very good actually. The knowledge that's on there it has tons of stuff on there for you to um, go through. And if you want to find out, it's got uh, mini documentaries. It's got video as well as text and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, next one is Connect Four. Classic, obviously based on the board game. Trying to get four in a row. Um, two players. You each choose a colour. Your counter becomes that colour, and then you just go around the board. Um, trying to yeah see how well you can do um, again in there a lot of the 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 the, the, the uh, what do you call it hinges are broken so the fronts have come off that's what I'm trying to say next one is a game that I was actually mentioning to my good mate Shop16 um, on YouTube not long ago. Um, I've just uploaded um, a video of my Sega Mega Drive collection. It took me <laughs> almost four months to upload the second part because it's a bit random. Um, and he asked me if there were any Mega Drive games that I don't have in my collection currently that I'd love to get hold of. And you can actually get this game, Dark Castle, on the Mega Drive as well. So I did say to him that I'd love to get it on the Mega Drive as well and see how it, um, see how it uh, works. I'm just going to turn the brightness down a little bit because I think that's why it's glaring so much. Um, there we go, that's better. So there you go, Dark Castle. Uh, you basically play as a guy that has to go through different levels, swinging on ropes and avoiding um, enemies and stuff. But having said that, it's quite frustrating to play because when he throws um, an item or a ball or anything to try and kill bats that are flying around and stuff like that, it works on like a, an axis, so rather than having kind of free range of motion where you can kind of go up and down with your hand and then sh and then kind of fire, it's like his arm's out and it just goes like that, it judders. So you can't go in between these gaps, it's like you can only go like here or here, here or here, you can't go sort of in between. And it's just like, what? So when the bats are flying around, you have to have it absolutely 100% spot on to kill them. If you have it even slightly out, they're going to grab you and kill you. So that also makes it more difficult, you die a lot more, and for me, I just thought that was unnecessary. But overall, I do enjoy it. It's just, yeah, the, the stupid axes in terms of throwing stuff. Like, I know Sebastian, Half Blind Gamer, mentioned that before as well in one of his videos, and I totally agree, mate, totally agree. No need for that whatsoever. There you are. Next one. Defend of the Crown. Yeah. Quite a few people have hyped this up. You can also get this on, is it the NES? NES. I think it is the NES, actually. I'm sure it's the NES. I'm sure I saw someone show off some of their NES games and it was in there. Um, but yeah, you can get it on obviously the CDI as well. Doesn't do a lot for me at all, I'm afraid. Does not do a lot for me at all. It's just about basically, uh, well, it's going back to the times of Maidens, um, and kings and stuff. It's it's all about King Richard. He's been murdered, um, and all all of England is engaged in civil war. Um, and then it's just basically you've got your own um, army, and then you have to fight the enemy basically and hold them off and stuff. And you have to take over different territories around the map. And it's it goes around the UK, so you have to take over different territories. Um, yeah, it just doesn't do anything for me. It wasn't my kind of thing. I just didn't take to it. I really didn't. Um, but. Yeah, maybe it's a lot. Maybe it's a bit better on the NES. I don't know. 